Four years ago, during April vacation, I was in Nashville, Tennessee, and when I was there, I bought this t-shirt that has masks from four different cultures around the world. There's Asian, African, Native American, and European. And I thought I would start out with a story from the Asian culture, and since this week uh, we're celebrating Chinese New Year. Um, it's from China. And now let's see, there are animals from the Chinese zodiac. And what are those animals? Fox and tiger. Boar and rat. Snake. Horse. Rabbit. Dragon. Ram. Monkey. Rooster. Dog. Yes. Now before we go into how the animals got in the order that they're in, I thought I'd tell you a strange story about two of these animals, about dragon and about rooster. Now you probably didn't know this, but long, long ago, rooster had beautiful horns and he was very proud of his horns. And dragon was very envious. Dragon would say to all of his friends, oh, if I could only have rooster's horns, I would be the most beautiful creature. And he said to his friend Worm, do you think Rooster would lend me his horns when I go up to visit the sky god? And Worm said, well, I'll tell you what. First you must flatter Rooster. First you must tell him how handsome he is. And Dragon flew down to where Rooster was strutting about and he said, Rooster, I think you are a very handsome creature. And Rooster strutted about. And Worm said, now tell him that you really like his red comb. You know, said Dragon, what I like best about you is that beautiful red comb you have on the top of your head. It is lovely, isn't it, said Rooster. Now, said Worm, tell him that you like his tail feathers. Yes, said Dragon, and I think your tail feathers are fine too. And Rooster was walking up and down beside a pool of water, and he looked at his own reflection, admiring his tail feathers. Now, ask about his horns, said Worm. And Dragon said, but you know what I think is really the most beautiful thing of all is your horns. And Rooster shook his head to show off his horns. And Dragon said, oh, if I could only borrow your horns when I visit the sky god, how happy I would be. Would you give them back, said Rooster. Oh, of course, said Dragon. So Rooster took out his horns and put them on Dragon's head. And Dragon flew off to see the sky god. Well, the next morning, when the sun rose, Rooster looked up at the sky to see if Dragon was coming back to give him back his horns. No dragon. He looked day after day. And finally he began to get quite angry. He would see the sun and he would say, Give me back my horns! Give me back my horns! Maybe you think he's saying cock-a-doodle-doo, but that's what he's really saying. Did Dragon ever give him back his horns? No, because today you don't see a rooster with horns. But you do see Chinese dragons with beautiful horns. And that also explains why whenever a rooster sees a worm on the ground, he chases after it. And then there's another story from the Chinese zodiac, how they decided which animal was going to be first. They were at a great banquet in the sky god's house, and the sky god said, now 12, you 12 animals, will decide who's first. You can race across the river, you can swim across the river, and whoever gets to the other side first will be first in the Chinese zodiac. 
So they all started swimming across, except for Rat. Rat was very tricky. Rat was hiding on Ox's head. And by the time Ox got to the other side, Ox was a very strong swimmer, and he was first. Rat hopped over, and Rat was the first one across the river. And so that is how Rat became first in the Chinese zodiac, and then Ox, and then Tiger, and then so on. Now, I think you people were all born in either the year of the dragon. How many of you are dragons? Is it dragons? Or some of you are rabbits? Ra rabbits. Okay, the rabbits raise your hand. Okay, and then the tigers. The rest of you are tigers. And I happen to be a horse. So that's just kind of an, another interesting way to look at how people are organized. So now we're going to move on to Africa. And we're going to start our spider stories. And in Africa, one of the most famous characters is the trickster Anansi, the spider. Sometimes Anansi helps the people, as when he brought down the stories from the sky god. But most times, Anansi is nothing but trouble. And this is a story about how Anansi might have been just a little bit too clever for his own good. Anansi was sitting in his house, and he was about to eat his dinner. He had a huge plate of chicken and vegetables, and he was about ready to start eating, when all of a sudden there was a knock at his door. It was Turtle. And Turtle said, Hello, Anansi. I see you're about ready to eat. Well, Anansi didn't want to share his food with him. But it was a law that you always had to be hospitable to guests. So Anansi said, All right, Turtle, come on in. You can share my food with me. But then Anansi's trickster mind started working. He said, Oh, but Turtle. You're much too dirty. You'll have to go down to the river and wash off your feet. So Turtle walked down to the river and washed. And when Turtle had come back, Anansi had already eaten half the food. Anansi looked up and he said, Well, Turtle, maybe you thought you washed, but you're still pretty dirty. You'll have to go back again. So Turtle, you know, turtles don't go very fast. He went back to the uh, river and washed again. And when he came back, about three-quarters of the food was gone. And Anansi said, let me see those, those hands and feet. No, you're still dirty. You'll have to go wash again. So poor Turtle plodded back to the river and washed for a third time. And of course, when he got back to Anansi's house, there wasn't a bit of food left. And Turtle said, thanks for dinner. You'll have to come visit me sometime. Well, Anansi was thinking about that. So one day, as he was walking along the river, he saw Turtle sunning himself. And he said, oh, Turtle, do you think this is the day I could have dinner with you? And Turtle said, all right, I have to go down under the water to fix some food. And then after a while, he stuck his head up over the river bank. And he said, all right, Anansi, come down underwater, and, and you can eat my feast with me. Well, Anansi jumped in the water, but of course the spider is very little and light. So he just went down a little bit and the food was way down there. But Anansi thought, oh, I'm a clever fellow. I know what to do. So he was wearing a little jacket and he filled all of his pockets with heavy pebbles. And then when he jumped into the water, he sank all the way down to the bottom. And he saw there, Turtle had a fine feast of all sorts of fish and crabs an octopus. And, oh, Anansi couldn't wait to start eating. And Turtle looked up and he said, oh, Anansi, you can't eat at my table. It's against my rules for you to wear a jacket. So you have to take your jacket off. And of course, when Anansi took his jacket off, he floated back up to the surface. And that just goes to show you that if you try to trick people, someday you may meet someone who will be more clever and trick you. And that's one of the Anansi stories from Africa. And when we come back, we will have a story of Spider Woman.
from the Navajo people. Keep pipeline safe, be pipeline smart. Know what's below before you start. I'm Piper the Owl. Fuel for cars and homes comes from pipelines. Help keep pipelines safe. Look for a marker before you dig. But even if you don't see one, phone your state one call notification center. Be pipeline safe, be pipeline smart. Make that call before you start. A message from the American Petroleum Institute and U.S. Department of Transportation. This story comes from the southwestern part of the United States in uh, Arizona and New Mexico. This is the story of wandering girl who became weaving woman and the terrible thing that happened to her when she disobeyed spider woman. And this is the way the old ones tell the tale. Long ago, all of the animals and the insects lived in the third world where all was darkness. There was a great flood in the third world and the animals and the insects escaped up through a tube into the fourth world. And it was beautiful. They'd never seen anything like it. There were mountains, there was sunshine, there was the red mesas, the blue sky. And the spirit being decided that he would create people. He created the Dene, the Navajo. And among the people, there was a girl who was a, a shepherd. She was called Wandering Girl because she always accompanied her sheep as they wandered about grazing. And among the people, there was a boy who loved her. He was called Boy with a Dream. Well, during the spring, Wandering Girl took her sheep high up in the mountains. And the spirit being taught the people how to live. He taught them which animals they could kill. He taught them how to plant. He taught them how to build hogans to live in. And he taught them how to tame fire. Wandering Girl stayed with her sheep in the mountains throughout the spring and the summer and the fall. She came back and it was winter. It was cold. Where is everybody, she said. They were in their hogans, keeping warm by the fire. And Spider Woman called to her and she said, Come, live with me, and I will teach you how to make warm blankets. The husband of Spider Woman built a loom for the girl. And as Spider Woman taught her how to shear the wool off her sheep and card the wool and spin the wool into strands of yarn, she said, you will no longer be called Wandering Girl. Now you will be called Weaving Woman. And she showed Weaving Woman how to weave blankets on the loom. And Spider Woman said, but I caution you. As the spirit being taught the people that they must never do too much of one thing, I caution you not to spend too much time at your loom. And then Weaving Woman went out of Spider Woman's Hogan. And she said, how could I spin in in the cold, freezing winter. My, my spindles will freeze. There'll be ice all over them. And Boy with a Dream came out of his Hogan and he said, well, if you would marry me, you could live in my Hogan and be warm. And Weaving Woman said, yes, we will be married. And Boy with a Dream became man who was happy. And so Weaving Woman went to live in his Hogan, and she set up her loom inside, and, and it was winter, and, and she wove warm blankets, and she didn't spend too much time weaving the blankets. She had made the blankets brown and gray. But then spring came to the land, and she looked about her, and all was so beautiful. She, she put her loom outside, and she began to think, um, 
I wonder if I could find berries to dye the wool and, and make them the colors that I see around me. And she found red berries to make the thread red like the mesas and, and blue to make it blue like the sky above the mountains to the south and, and white like the light that came in the east and gold like the setting sun in the west and black like the mountains to the north. And then she learned how to, how to weave pictures in her blanket. She wove a rainbow. She put in the mountains. And she made a picture of, of man who was happy hunting the animals. And then while she was sleeping one night, suddenly she sat up and she said, I have a wonderful idea. I will make a blanket for the spirit being. And in the blanket, I will put every color in the whole world, and, and I will put in it everything that I can see. She couldn't wait to get started. She, she got up at the dawn's first light, and she sat down at her loom, and she wove all day long. She wove until the sun set in the west. She could no longer see. She wove day after day. She did nothing else but weave this blanket. And man who is happy became man who was frightened. He came home from hunting, and he found weaving woman lying lifeless on the floor. She wasn't dead. There was a little bit of breath coming from her mouth. He called a hand trembler, which was a kind of a healer. And the hand trembler came to their Hogan, and, and he ground corn, and he smeared it on his body, and he smeared it on those, that of, of weaving woman. And he looked about, and he said, her soul has been stolen. And then they heard weaving woman's voice. It did not come from her mouth. It came from the blanket on the loom. And she said, help me. I'm trapped in the blanket. Well, man who was frightened had to go get stronger magic. He went to get a shaman. And the shaman came, and he ground more corn, and he put into the corn all of the wool and the spindles. And he said, the house is now filled with magic. And I see what has happened. Weaving woman disobeyed spider woman. And now her soul is trapped in the blanket. Only Spider Woman can make the blanket less than perfect. But only the maker of the blanket, the weaver, can give Spider Woman permission to do so. And from the blanket on the loom came Weaving Woman's voice. Please, Spider Woman, make the blanket less than perfect. And Spider Woman took a thread from the blanket, from the gray background, and she pulled it. And she made a little pathway. And the spirit of Weaving Woman came out of the blanket and back into her body. And she, she sat up and she said, thank you, Spider Woman, for releasing me. And the next day, she brought all of the people before Har Hogan, and she showed them how to weave. And she said, but. I warn you, never spend too much time at your loom, and never make your blankets perfect. Always pull a thread so that there will be a path, and your spirit will not be trapped within the blanket. And so it is to this very day. Every Navajo blanket that you will see will have one thread pulled, so the weaver's soul will not be trapped there. And so it is the way the old ones tell the story. And now I would like to take us briefly back to Nashville, Tennessee, as there is a replica of a Greek temple. It's a replica of the Parthenon that is in Athens. And within the temple in Nashville, there is a statue of the goddess Athena, she is 40 feet tall, and she stands with a great spear and a huge shield and her hand outstretched with a winged victory on her hand. And this is a story from ancient Greece 
about the goddess Athena, who was the goddess of wisdom, and she sprang from the head of her father, from the head of Zeus. And it was Athena who taught the women of ancient Greece how to spin and weave. Now among the women there was a girl, she was just a nobody. Her name was Arachne, but she could spin. She would sit on the porch of her house, spinning away and weaving at her loom, and, and the water nymphs would come up from the streams, and, and the dryads would come out of the forest, and the animals just to watch her. And she'd say, oh, I'm good, aren't I? <laughs> I think I'm better than the goddess Athena herself. High on Mount Olympus, Athena heard those words. Oh, the poor girl, she doesn't really know what she's talking about. And beautiful, gray-eyed Athena disguised herself as an old woman. And she came hobbling down the road to Arachne's house. And Arachne said, Granny, come up and sit on my porch and watch me weave. The old woman sat down. Arachne threw her shuttle back and forth. I'm good, aren't I? I think I'm better than the goddess Athena herself. I have challenged her to a weaving contest, <laughs> but she has not the courage to accept my challenge. Oh, yes, she has. And the old woman stood up, and she turned into the beautiful goddess Athena. I accept your challenge. So two looms were set up on Arachne's porch, one for the goddess and one for the mortal girl, and everyone came to watch the contest. They each wove a beautiful tapestry. Now Athena's tapestry showed Mount Olympus with all the gods in her family, Zeus and Hera and Poseidon, and herself and her brothers and sisters, and all about the tapestry she put a border of olive leaves. Now, Arachne's tapestry was quite different. In it, she showed the picture of Zeus and all the times he had tricked mortal girls into being his lover. All of the disguises he had used. As a bull, he had courted Europa. As a shower of gold, he had deceived Bordane. And as a swan, he lured Leda. And when Athena looked, at Arachne's tapestry, and she realized that she was making fun of her father, of her beloved father, Zeus. Athena was so enraged, she took her shuttle and she cut Arachne's tapestry in two. Poor Arachne, her tapestry was ruined forever. She took a rope and she went to a tree and she hanged herself. But Athena came over, and with magic powder she said, Do not die, girl. Live. But live like this. And she sprinkled the powder on Arachne. And Arachne's head, a great ball became. Her body, too, a black ball became, and she had eight arms and legs. For Arachne, you see, had become a spider, and to this day she's spinning still. And some of you are doing spider's webs and cat's cradles, and these are string games that are played all over the world. No matter where you go, you find children are doing things just like that. And it's sort of like spinning and weaving, like spider woman and Athena, and Arachne. And thank you so much for being here today. Mm -hmm.